Hello and welcome to the News at 7, where we get to the heart of the day's stories and to communities across Scotland tonight. A potential breakthrough in understanding ME. Researchers in Edinburgh say they've found evidence that the condition is built into the DNA of those who suffer from it. Before, it was looked at as a psychiatric illness, whereas now there is medical proof that this is a disease and can be treated. First tonight, it's historically been one of the most misunderstood and scientifically mysterious medical conditions. But ME, which can cause chronic fatigue, brain fog and physical pain, affects an estimated 50,000 Scots and scientists have been working hard to establish a root cause. A few weeks ago, we explained how researchers at the University of Edinburgh have linked the condition not just to our brains, but to our blood. And tonight, that same team has revealed new findings, suggesting ME is in fact part of the DNA of those who live with it. In a moment, we will hear from one of the scientists behind that breakthrough. But first, Hazel Martin explains the reality for those seeking an explanation and a cure. Myalgic encephalomyelitis, or ME, affects tens of thousands of Scots including Amanda, who's had the condition since she was 19. I had to give up quite a lot of my life because, you know, people at 19, they're going to university, they're meeting people, they're getting married and things like that. And if you can only get out of the house one day a week, that means that you effectively have to give up your life to it. There is no known cure. There is no specialist in, in Scotland to treat ME, so that leaves the GP in charge of your treatment. And the problem with the GP is they, they are very pushed for time and they're also pushed for resources but they don't actually have anything to offer or treat you with either. So effectively, you, you're, you're self-managing symptoms rather than actually getting any treatment. The disease affects mostly women and the most common symptom is chronic fatigue, but others include sleep issues like insomnia or oversleeping, brain fog, and symptoms worsening after physical or mental activity. Despite this, people living with ME say they are often not believed. I generally don't tell people that I have ME because I do believe that they have preconceptions and I'm never actually sure what reaction I'm actually going to get from somebody. So yes, I do feel that it affects your relationships with people because you never know what reaction you're going to get, positive or negative. Now, researchers from the University of Edinburgh suggest people can be genetically predisposed to the condition. This really is a huge game changer. I mean, this is the beginning of research and, and future funding, hopefully, but that is the changes that it has made because before it was looked at as a psychiatric illness, whereas now there is medical proof that this is a disease and can be treated. That was Amanda Stevenson ending that report from Hazel Martin. Well, earlier, Professor Chris Ponting, the lead researcher involved in Edinburgh University's study into the origins of ME, told me about the importance of his team's findings. This is the largest study of ME in the world. It's the largest ME genetic study, certainly. And what it tells us is that there are eight places in our genomes um, that predispose people to getting a diagnosis of ME, myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, which is a terrible, terrible condition um, with about 40,000 people in Scotland um, having ME um, and about a, a quarter of those are housebound or bedbound. So this research, could this make a difference in terms of treatment or could it even be important in terms of, of prevention, if that's even possible? How important could this be? We've always said that this is not going to immediately give people a treatment or a diagnosis. What instead it's doing is kick-starting a field that should have had this study 15 or 20 years ago. It's been held back uh, by stigma. Um, in part because this disease is very strongly female biased. Um, but now with this study, we should be able uh, to kickstart the, the, the new research field and get people in the scientific community and in society on board to ensure that um, all of the research that should have been done until now is done as fast as possible to accelerate towards those treatments and diagnoses that, that people really deserve. You're, you're saying, Professor, this could have been done 15 years ago. For you and your field, how frustrating is it then that it hasn't been done before now? And why is that? It, it's such a common disease. Most people know someone uh, with, with ME, but it's hugely stigmatised. 
Uh, so uh, people try and, and hide uh, the, the fact that they, they might have a diagnosis of ME. It's hugely misunderstood. There are a whole variety of, of different uh, opinions on that. And so the important thing here is not an opinion, it's, it's evidence. And this is what we have today, genetic evidence, genetic evidence that there is a genetic contribution uh, to why people become so unwell with this awful disease. I've spoken to a few people actually in the past, Professor, who have got ME and the common theme has been that they've not been believed and it has taken years to get a diagnosis. How can this change the opinion within the medical industry so that these people are taken seriously? I, as a scientist, all I can do is to present the evidence that we have in front of us. We, we could have found nothing. We could have said at the end of this large uh, 15 and a half thousand person uh, study that there was no genetics, but there is. And, and this allows people to take this sheet of paper with our evidence on it to everyone, their families, their friends, to their uh, healthcare professionals, and to say, look, here is evidence that there's a genetic uh, predisposition. It is not all in my head. And I mean, it's, as you say, it's not a cure, it's not even treatment, but I'm sure for many people with ME, it'll feel like a step, an important step potentially in the right direction. Professor Chris Ponting, thank you so much for joining us on the programme. Thank you.